Now in this video, let's talk about throws keyword. So we have talked about throw keyword. Now it's time for throws. Now this is not a plural form of throw. It's not like if you want to throw multiple exceptions, you will be using throws. A lot of people have this confusion. Throws has a different working. So before you understand throws, what I will do is uh, let's talk about a scenario. Let's say you are writing a method. So let's say the method name is D. Now, of course, in this method, you will write certain statements, right? And it is possible that all these statements, there is one statement here, which is critical. So let's say this statement is critical. And we know whenever you have a critical statement, it is always better to write try catch. So let's say we have a try here for this and we have a catch block as well. So just try to imagine this in a coding perspective. Let's say we have a statement which is critical and then you try to handle that with the help of try catch and we're doing that in a method D, okay? And let's say we have one more method here which is called E and in this method as well, you are writing some statement out of which there is one statement here. Let's say the first statement itself which you need to put that in try catch. Okay, because this statement is critical. Okay, so if you observe, we have two methods here, which is D and E, both have a statement which is critical. Now, of course, it makes sense to write try catch in each of the method, or we have one more choice here. What you can do is, let's say we have a method which is C, and C method is calling D and E both. Okay, so C method is calling D method and E method. Of course, in C, let's say we have some more statements. Let's say we have method C, and in this you have multiple statement out of which the two statements are calling D and E. Of course you can call methods, right? And then we have some more statements here. Now, if you try to observe the situation, what we are doing is we are trying to handle try catch by ourselves, right? In the D and E. But what if you could say, hey, you know what? D and E both have the same exception. So both have a critical statement. They will rise the same exception. So instead of handling those exception inside try catch in each of the method, can we just handle the try catch in C itself? So what you can do is you can put try here and catch. So when you are basically calling those methods, D and E, you can put them in try catch because both of the methods has a critical statement. In fact, the entire method becomes a critical methods, right? Because when you're calling it. So instead of handling those things here, let's not handle uh, using try catch here. Yes, we have a critical statement, but will not handle the exception in D and E. You can handle the exception in C. Okay, but then even if you work with this, it will give you an issue. It will say, okay, there's a problem with D and E, but still it will stop the execution. So one thing you can do is you can write here throws. So you can say throws exception and same goes here. You can say throws exception. Okay, so by doing this, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, whatever problem arises in D and E, they will not handle it. They will just send the exception to the method who is calling it. Sometimes just call ducking the exception because we are ducking it. We are not handling it, the method which is we are into. Let's say D and E says it's not my responsibility. So the method which is calling D and E, which is C in this case, will be handling those exceptions. Okay, and uh, in C, of course, you have to have try catch. If you don't have a try catch in C, it will again create a problem for you because it will stop the execution. Now we have one more thing. What if you're not doing try catch here? So of course, some method will be calling C, right? So let's say B is calling C method. Okay, now in this case, what you can do is you can put try catch here. And let's say uh, if you don't want to do try catch here, we have a main method. Now let's say main is calling B method here. Even main can have a try catch. So basically you can go up the ladder and you can write try catch in whatever method you want to write. So if you write try catch in main, then B says, okay, even I will throw the exception. C will say, even I will throw the exception. I will not handle the exception by myself. C will say, I want B to handle it. B will say, I want main to handle it. And of course your D and E both says C will handle it, okay? Now that is called ducking the exception for a particular method, but it is done with the help of throws keyword. Now this makes sense for checked exceptions, okay? See for unchecked exceptions, it's not compulsion for you to handle the exception, but whenever you have a checked exception, example, if you talk about IO exception, okay? Now in terms of IO exception, which happens when you use uh, input output, let's say you are reading something from the file or you are writing something, something to the file, 
or when you're doing SQL, which is database connectivity, at that point as well, when you're firing a query, it might raise an exception. In that case, you will be getting a checked exception. And we know, we have talked about this, in checked exception, if you write that statement, it is compulsory. Example, remember we have worked with one of the thing which is called class.forname, and in which you can mention the class name. Let's say my class name here is demo itself. So basically what you're doing is you're writing this statement and this statement says it might throw or it will throw a class not found exception. Now class not found exception is also comes into hierarchy where this is a checked exception. So it is asking you to compulsorily handle this exception. So you can put that in a try catch. So you can put that here and you can say catch. Now which exception we have to handle? Uh, the name of the exception is class not found exception and you can print not able to find the class. In fact, let's say, let's write a class called calc here. And you know, we don't have a calc class nowhere. Okay, now if you try to run this code, compile and run, you can see it will say not able to find the class. Now which class we're talking about? Calc class is not there. In fact, I can also print the error message here with this. So compile and run. You can see it says class not found exception. Which class? Calc, it's not there. But if you do it for demo, there's no issue because we do have a demo class here, right? So if I compile this and run, you can see it works. It says the default output, blah, 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 but there's no exception, there's no problem with this, okay? So in fact, we can also put this, we can just cut this part and let's say we are doing that in a separate method. So let's say we have a class A and in this class A, we have a method which is public void show. And in this show, we are doing this. We are trying to load the class demo here. And of course we have to call this. Now what I will do is I will just try to remove everything else so that we can make our code simple and remove this custom exception as well. And you can see we have a very simple code now. And if you want to work with show, of course you have to get object of A, you will say A OBJ and then you will say OBJ dot show, okay? And now if you try to work with this, when you say compile and run, you can see there's no problem because anyway, we are not printing anything. We're just trying to load the class. Of course, if you write a static block here, that will surely work. Let's try to do that as well because we have seen this. Let's create a static block and I'll print class loaded. In fact, you know, the, the weird thing is anyway, we are writing main method, right? So the class will be loaded anyway, but still, we're just trying to see if we get some output. Again, the class loaded is not happening because of the load. It's only because the main method is there in the demo. So anyway, it will be called. But the idea is we are trying to print something. But what if I try to work with a class called calc? Now, in this case, if you try to work with calc, it will give you an exception. You can see it says not able to find the class, which is calc. Okay, cool. And now... What if I don't write try catch? So what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, I will not handle the exception. So in this case, you can simply go back to shows and say throws class not found exception. And you can see there's no problem now because this statement knows that show is basically throwing the exception. So show says, I'm not responsible to handle the exception. You know, when you work for a company, there are some employees, they don't take responsibility of what went wrong. They will simply say, hey, talk to my manager, right? So the same thing is happening here. It says, hey, I'm not responsible to handle the exception. Talk to my manager, which is main because main is calling show. So it is main's responsibility to handle the exception. And that's why you can see we got an error here. It says unhandled exception. Okay, so now you have two choices. What you can do is either you can write try catch here or you can say throws class not found exception. Okay, so you have this choice. This is not recommended, okay? Never do that with main. Because if you see, when you're throwing the exception for main, the problem is, who is calling main? It's JVM. Now you are asking JVM, hey JVM, you have to handle this. Not a good idea because JVM will say, okay, if you throw it to me, I will simply stop the execution. So it's not a good idea to throw exception for main, but yeah, for other classes, let's say for show, because we know who is calling show, it's your main method, so main will be handling it. So don't write throws here, okay? You can just use try catch. In fact, you can ask your IDE, you can say quick fix, uh, surround with try catch and done. You don't have to do anything here. And this might be new, print a stack trace. Basically what it does is it prints the entire stack, which method is calling which method and you can actually track the entire method calls so that you know because of which method the problem has been arised. Okay, so if I compile this code and run, you can see this is the entire stack. So basically your main is calling show and behind the scene, we are calling class.fortname, which is behind the scene is calling this and that. So there's a hierarchy of method which is getting called. That's what the print stack trace does. 
So it's helpful to debug the application, but it's also good if you want to print a message. Okay, so yeah, that's about ducking the exceptions and using this throws keyword. In fact, we are going to use this a lot in the upcoming sessions. So you will get used to it.